Hey guys, it's Brian from Too Fab here with Thomas Brown from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, we're here talking about the 25th anniversary of the film. Can you believe it's been that long since this came out? In my world, yeah, it has <laughs> been a lot long. I mean, it's, uh, a lot's happened since 25 years. So. Yeah. I rewatched the movie last night. It had been a while for me. It holds up. I think it helps that there are so many practical effects in the film, but you know, it's still, it's still a good movie. <laughs> yeah, people still watch it. I, I get comments all the time. People, I, they show it regularly. Um, <laughs> A lot of kids I know who are growing up now and even in the past 25 years, obviously, mm -hmm. as, um, watch it and it's kind of funny. Know. Do you still get recognized by people? Uh, I mean, it's well, been so I mean, it's long. been a long time. I mean, you've got to have a really good eye to <laughs> yeah. really notice that. Um, I mean, I get recognized from some of the other work I've done and then yeah. they know that film. So <laughs> it's just kind of odd sometimes people, uh, the weirdest places, the people you don't expect to recognize you, obviously. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Sometimes. Now, did you go to Mexico City to film this? Yes, we yeah. shot in Mexico so City. So what was that like? You're uh, 16 in Mexico City doing this huge film. That was the <laughs> thing. It was definitely, uh, it was a little bit of a culture shock. I yeah. was, you know, like I said, I was uh, uh, 16 and I was, uh, this is the world, being in Mexico at the time, um, away, I was there with my mom and um, I actually, at first it was a little bit of a shock, but I became, I embraced it, I loved it. Yeah. Um, I started painting, I just kind of immersed myself in Mexican culture. I started speaking Spanish. Um, um, I actually fell in love with it. It was actually, first I was a little terrified, a little oh, yeah, first, you know, everybody, yeah, change. it's a big city, and you know, over the gun, you know, the police are all walk around with the guns like, like this. It's not even like in America where the yeah. guys have guns. I mean, they're, like, <laughs> they're holding oh, Yeah, they're up. ready, like they look like they're gonna rob you anytime and little things like that. But um, <laughs> after a while, you know, I just kind of like let down my guard and, um, yeah, it was, I actually loved it. I actually I got a lot, a lot of friends I made there and a lot of relationships. So. Rewatching the film, uh, the sets were incredible. I just want to know what it was like the first time you stepped onto that and saw how big everything was. Yeah, it was pretty overwhelming. <laughs> we, we had like, I think, six sound stages uh, that we took over and they'd been building the sets, I think, like about a year, year and a half prior to even us getting there. Yeah. Pretty overwhelming. I mean, just, just, just the floor, I think, was just this massive soundstage of just a giant floor yeah. with the planks, you know, and the, the spacing, you know, three feet apart or two feet apart or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool just to see the massive size of it, you know. Was there a sequence that was your favorite to film? The bee was obviously fun because yeah. it was just green screen work and, you know, you know flying around <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, the ant was fun, you know, just, the, just doing the action stuff was obviously the, more, the most fun of it. Yeah. Um, Brain drops. You know, they thought what of so many different. What were those made out of? They, that's, they, they, they thought of so many things. I mean, they, they like this, the the raindrops were pretty cool because it was like this built-in jungle, and they had built these cannons. They had these cannons under underground, yeah. underneath. They would splash, and it wasn't even water because they realized that if you were that small, the particles of water would be thicker. So it was like this thicker gel. Yeah, so it, wasn't it like, looked sticky. Yeah, it's thin and it's thicker because each particle would be bigger to us. So they had these, and then they had these big drops <laughs> falling right onto these cannons and then it, right at the same time as they'd hit they'd also blow up so, <laughs> so they'd create the splash actually that was kind of a fun sequence. all right one more question everyone wants to know about the giant cookie <laughs> what oh. was it like when you saw it and what was it actually made out of <laughs> uh actually that's kind of funny because i actually was wondering the same thing when we first were going to shoot it i was like well, i wonder what they're going to do it was actually so simple it was not even funny it's like a giant wood framed cookie mm -hmm. with just a section of <laughs> Stuff that's edible frosting. something. Yeah, they put like a <laughs> section in there that we could eat, and then that was basically the part that we could touch and eat, and the other part we couldn't, and it was just the same, whatever it was, <laughs> yeah. texture. And I'm sure it was, they probably had meetings about the texture and how the, the, the molecules of, of being bigger, I'm sure it was like that too, so uh, that was basically that part. Yeah, it, was, it would have been nice to have some of those uh, props and sets. I would have liked to probably, it would have been pain dragging it around for the last 25 yeah. years or putting it in storage. <laughs> well, you have that big giant cigarette butt. Why not? Oh, I don't know, because it's kind of cool. <laughs> Put your bar. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this for us. Appreciate it's it. Great no to meet you. <laughs> great. Thank you.